Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 89 to 91 of the purple booklet. This is a question about a ball um, which rebounds in it with a body which is moving in the opposite direction. We're told that this is a perfectly elastic collision. So just a reminder of what that means, that there's no loss of kinetic energy or momentum from the system. So if you throw a ball, you might hear it passing through the air, and that's because of the kinetic energy of the ball being changed into sound energy. That's not something that's happening here. All the energy is maintained within the system, and that's what it means um, for an elastic collision. So question 89 um, asks, after rebounding from the body, what is the magnitude of the momentum of the ball? So we're given quite a lot of information here, but the, the most useful is this graph we've been given, and it talks about the time over which a force is applied to a ball. And we know that the change in momentum is going to be the amount of force multiplied by the change in time. Therefore, the area under this triangle is going to be equal to the change in the momentum. So we know that the height of the triangle, and we'll just say delta P, um, is going to be equal to half the base, which is going to be 0 0.08 seconds times the height, which is 300 in this case. That gives us an answer of 0 0.04 times 300, which is um, 12 newton seconds. So the change in momentum is going to be 12 newton seconds. Now remember that there's really only two parts to this. There's the initial before the collision, and then there's the final. So I'm going to use that notation for before and after the collision, because the change in momentum is going to be the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So if we're looking at the momentum of the ball after the collision, we need to work out what the momentum of the ball before it was, and then take it away from this number. So another equation for momentum is that momentum is mass times velocity, and we can get that from the units. If we have a look at the initial momentum then, it's going to be a mass of 0.15 multiplied by 30. It means the initial momentum is 4.5 newton seconds. If we know the change in momentum is going to be 12, um, then we can sub in our numbers and work out what the magnitude of the final momentum would be, which is going to be 12 minus 4.5 which gives us 7.5 newton seconds, or just newton seconds there. So that, in this case, gives us an answer of A. If we move on to the next question, which is question 90, it says, as a consequence of the elastic collision, the energy of the ball does what? So when you see elastic collision, you should always remember that the energy of the system doesn't change, but that doesn't mean that the energy of the parts of the system doesn't change. So the wall could end up moving faster or slower, and the ball could end up moving faster or slower. And so the kinetic energy of each of these bodies will change. Um, but the overall combined kinetic energy of both of them won't, because it's a, an elastic collision. So I think that's why a lot of people would go for A here um, by accident, just not really understanding. Uh, it's just looking at the kinetic energy of one of the parts of the system, whereas the idea of an elastic collision looks at the entire system itself. So the answer is not going to be A. Um, Looking at whether or not it increases or decreases, um, well, we can do a calculation to work that out, but just to rule out D, um, it's, we're definitely able to determine it from the information provided. And I'll show you how to do that now so we can work out whether or not it increases or decreases um, by 120 joules. So kinetic energy, there's an equation for this, which is the half times the mass times the velocity squared. So let's have a look at um, the change in kinetic energy which is going to be the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So let's work with the initial kinetic energy. And we know it's going to be a half times the mass times the initial velocity squared. And that's going to be 30, because that's the velocity before um, the collision. That's going to give us um, 900 multiplied by half multiplied by 0.15 which we can simplify to 450 times 0.15, um, 
which then brings us down to an answer of 67.5. Um, it'll be joules then, because we're talking about energy, so the unit here is joules. So now, what happens if we look at the kinetic energy? Finally, you might already see the issue. We know there's a half multiplied by the mass, which is 0.15, but we don't know the final velocity yet. And that's why some people might pick D, because they say you're unable to determine that from the information provided, but you can actually, because another equation for momentum is going to be the mass times the velocity. And we know the momentum afterwards is 7.5. We know the mass is 1.5, and we just need to work out what the final velocity is. So the final velocity, therefore, is going to be um, 7.5 divided by 0.15. And that's going to give us an answer of 75 over 15, or um, 1.5 even, which is going to give us an answer of 50 uh, meters per second. So we can plug that into our equation for our final kinetic energy, which is going to be a half times 0.15 times 50 squared, which gives us quite a big number, which is going to be um, 2,500 multiplied by a half multiplied by 0.15. If you put those calculations together, you get a final kinetic energy, which is 187.5. So initially, the kinetic energy is 67.5, and then it changes to a final kinetic energy of 187.5. And therefore, there's an increase of 120 joules of kinetic energy. So that means the answer for number 90 is going to be C. And then looking finally at 91. It says, consider the combined momentum and the combined kinetic energy of the ball and the body during the collision. In other words, what is the momentum and kinetic energy of the entire system we've been talking about? Which is true um, about the conservation of momentum and kinetic energy. So again, this goes back to understanding what an elastic collision actually means. We know that we're looking at the entire system now, and in an elastic collision, the entire system conserves momentum and kinetic energy. And that's option A in this case. So the answer for number 91 is going to be A. So there were some questions on uh, momentum during a, an elastic collision. It was questions 89 to 91 of section three of the purple booklet. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.